والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين good afternoon for istanbul and turkey and good morning for us and west europe and also good evening for the south asia today uh, almira uh, professor almira ahmetova assistant professor from kulia of islamic revealed knowledge and human sciences he is our guest she will make a presentation today and uh, we will give her uh, 45 minutes for presentation then maybe half an hour or 40 minutes for uh, questions and answers uh, almira uh, some of you you, you you know almira for a while uh, i think i know her for more than one decade mm -hmm. And she received her uh, Doctor of Philosophy in History and Civilization, International Islamic University, Malaysia. And uh, her master of uh, also is uh, uh, of human science, history and civilization uh, in 27 and Bachelor of Islamic Revealed and Heritage, Fiqh and Usul of Fiqh from the same university in 2002. Currently she is in Istanbul and in Iskudar and she's my neighbor. Welcome to Iskudar uh, uh, Almira. And she established with her husband a new on, uh, online institute under Tribal IT. And, uh, and soon we'll start doing research on Tefsir studies under Humboldt who work at Freiburg University in Germany. And I just if I just uh, you know mention a few of his her books. It is uh, uh, Politics and Islam at the Age of Nationalism. It's published in 2017. And especially the con conception of pan-Islamism and the issue of the caliphate in Russia and Turkey. And in 2013, uh, she published Islam in Russia, Historical Facts and Modern Developments, and also by International Institute of Advanced Islamic Studies, Malaysia, uh, Kuala Lumpur. And in, 2000, in 2017, uh, she published Islam and Diplomacy, the quest for human security, again from Kuala Lumpur. And I would like to thank Dr. Elmira once more to accept our invitation to be our guest today and to talk today on the topic of the impact of nationalism on social well-being and human security in the 21st century, the prognosis and Risale Nur and current realities. Almira, you are welcome. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, all. Dear professors, from whom I learned for the more than decade, as the Professor Ibrahim Uzdemir was mentioning. So, today, what I am planning to do today, I am going to share some ideas, I mean, the related to the my understanding of the nationalism in the Badiou Zaman Said Nursi's the uh, uh, Risale Nur. And after that, I am also willing to have some discussion with you. Because for me, yeah, because you know, the I choose this the topic, the impact of in impact of nationalism on social well-being and human security in the 21st century, because we are seeing a lot of difficulties today. I mean, that sometimes I feel that, that there is no even the, I mean, we are living in a such the time that I am not seeing any outcome from the problems what we are uh, facing today. It's why, but you know, my studying of the ideas of nationalism in the writings of Badiou Zaman Said Nursi started when I was doing my master's degree. So after that, in 2013, I was writing one article and uh, about the, I, I was comparing the ideas of Badiou Zaman Said Nursi with the ideas of Musa Jarullah on nationalism. Then I didn't touch this topic for a while. When the Hakan was mentioning to me that the, we are, uh, I mean, the, there is the, she was, uh, he was inviting me to do this the talk. I was thinking what topic I have to present. Then I realized, yes, maybe it will be good for me to return back to this topic. 
because the during this 10, 10 years time, many things were changing and the, even my understanding of the, this topic have changed completely. So after the seeing what is happening around us and uh, what is happening around us is the too many things are happening around us. I'm trying, I'm not telling here that the problems were not happening in our history, but totally different. So what we have, the, what is the current realities? If you are paying attention here, I am talking about nationalism, impact of nationalism on social well-being and human security today in the 21st century. So I am trying to explain it from the prognosis or the what is written in Risale Anur, how Badi Zaman Said Nursi was the envisaging what will be the impact of nationalism on well-being and human security. Uh, let's say after 80 years, after 100 years, and also what we are seeing today. So I am starting from the very back of the title from the last term in the title, current realities, what we are facing today. So we are having minority issues. So and Palestinian issue, usually we, uh, uh, we are always talking about Palestinian issue because this is most common and the most uh, valuable for us because this is the Baytul Maqdis and this is the real is the, uh, outcome of the some kind of the racism apartheid government we are seeing this one but at the same time there are many other problems are happening for example crimean tatars not many people are knowing about what did happen to crimean tatars in uh, after when it became the when it was taken by the russian empire from the ottoman the influence but nobody is talking about it and these are the or the muslim brothers and sisters and such kind of cases are a lot then in the 1944, Crimean Tatars were deported. The hundred percent of the Crimean Tatars, not only Crimean Tatars, English, Chechen, uh, the places the, of the Central Asia where no one was living, and they were, it was genocide. But the world didn't know about it. And also we have the problems of the Uyghurs today, or the Rohingyas, and many more. Then what we are, these are the problems, okay, we are seeing related to the human security today, and also we are witnessing civil wars in the Muslim world, for example, I am focusing on the Muslim world today, so we have the problem, we had the problems in Afghanistan, Iraq, it's happening in Syria, Libya, even in the last, I think, five years, too many things were happening, then we are witnessing rise of religious extremism and also the feeling that the Muslims are considering themselves as a superior is not on the basis of Iman, nothing related to religion, but it is something is happening totally different today. I was living in Malaysia for 23 years. So during this 23 years as a outsider, because as an outsider, because I came to Malaysia, I was applying for a visa every year as a student. Then I found the job, but even after the finding the job, I needed to apply uh, all the time for working visa. So I was the, just observing how is this situation, how they are seeing us as outsider. So in the last years, it was the totally the some of the changes were happening. People became more nationalistic. In the, on the case of Malaysia, and it's happening everywhere, uh, not only in the Muslim world, and the uh, plural and pluralistic also movements are happening everywhere. It can be Islamophobia, racism is rising. So it was, it is in Malaysian case, you know, it was nationalism is linked to religion. So it is very unique understanding because in Malaysia, according to even the Malaysian constitution, this is the, every Malay is a Muslim. So all the Malays the, are Muslims and every Muslim is a Malay, there is the common term. So after that, it is very difficult for people to differentiate where is the Malayness and where is the ethnicity. So as a result, ethnicity started regulating Islamness. 
So malignance became the higher than the being a Muslim and everything is the, it became the, I think it is the religious feelings are hijacked with the nationalism. What the Badu Zaman said here, she was talking about, right? The, when the, uh, this belonging to the, I will mention about it, uh, when the negative nationalism is rising, when the religious feelings of people are going to be controlled by ethnic feelings or the racism. So what we are witnessing today, we are witnessing lack of social well-being and also the human uh, lack of human security. People are very much frustrated and unhappy. Every year there is the organization, some organizations are, uh, they are uh, creating indexes, right? The index of happiness, index of corru corruption, index of the democracy. So. I am following this the index every year because uh, I am teaching about the politics uh, in the Muslim world. So year by year, the happens the feeling of the happens among Muslims is decreasing. So they are feeling frustrated. You know, a lot of the cases of suicide is happening even uh, in the Islamic University. Uh, everything is, it looks everything perfect. Most, many of you visited or you were working at the International Islamic University. It did not, such kind of things did not happen during my time, you know. Now students are feeling hopeless. There is the hopelessness is really is increasing among Muslims. So not only the hopelessness, they are also the feeling I mean, the, they feel some kind of frustration. This hopelessness is linked to the anger and this is very dangerous. So, and uh, cases of suicide the, among the students are also rising. There are some students, they are not willing to leave. They are, uh, I mean, they, they don't have any hope for future. And this is happening in Islamic universities. So this is reality. I mean, okay, this is reality what we are seeing today for what my heart is really is the etching. I am feeling very, I mean, the, it's really is the painful for me because, you know, I am from non-Muslim country. I grew up uh, during the Soviet Union time and then I found Islam. I found Islam by reading the book of the Iman Hakikatler of Badu Zaman Sayyid Nursi. It was translated into Tatar. So this is, then I was so happy because I found something. I found my happiness in Islam. Then I moved to Malaysia. I was very happy because I'm able to wear scarf. I was so happy person when I was in the university. So, and not only me, many of my classmates were so happy and sitting and we were, uh, I mean, we were united. We were sharing all the, uh, or the feelings or the sadness, everything together. But my students are normalizing. So what did happen to us? It is, you know, what is the core motif in the disunity? People are disuni disunited, later I will mention about it. They are disunited not by territory, it's not by some kind of the ideologies, but they are disunited. Their hearts are also disunited. Their spiritual side is also disunited from their the physical side and also from the intellectual side. So there are small, small units today. This balance is really is happening today, what I'm experiencing in last years. But if we are going, I'm sorry, I am not going to tell here that everything is related to nationalism. No, it's the nationalism is not always the core reason for it. We will discuss later about it. But the some, the problems, what are related to the such kind of the happenings like the minority issues or the issues over the territory like Palestinian issue, human rights issues or the civil wars, are they are happening because we are, uh, I mean, they always is the, we are brainwashed because of sometimes is the religion also playing some import, important role, but we are always opposing, but are they, the motives are always ethnic. And what is religion today? What is ethnicity today? It's really is the, everyone is confused. I think this confusion is the main word today to express our feelings. I mean, we are too much confused today. So this is our current reality. So then, what is nationalism? So, I mean, the, I don't know how you are uh, making this is the talk 
I mean, the, I presently thought we, the, we have discussion or I will, it's up to you. I can finish everything because I prepared four or five questions for discussion also. It's up to if you have any question, anything to add, I think you can just stop me and uh, uh, you can just stop me. And after that, uh, we can discuss it. It's up to you. Should I continue? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. So what is nationalism? So this is what is nationalism. I am telling here what we are studying at the universities about nationalism, how we are in decision nationalism, how the in modern civilization, how we are perceiving nationalism. So contemporary interpretation of nationalism. So I told it contemporary interpretation of nationalism. So there are a little bit difference between the Muslim interpretation. There is a little bit between Muslim interpretation and the Western interpretation. But still what we are seeing as nationalism is almost the same today. So it is a modern ideology. It emerged after the, around the time of the French revolution. And the, even the name was the coined by the German philosopher, the Herder. So Anthony Smith was giving the definition to nationalism accordingly. He said, it is an ideology, ideological movement for the attainment and maintenance of self-government and independence on behalf of a group. Some of those members conceive it, it to constitute an actual or potential nation like others. So this is what we were experiencing in the Muslim world also in the 20th century, because the, all the Muslim nations tried to get the independent nation states, because this was the only option. It was the only option to get the independence from their colonial powers. So I don't think Muslim nation, uh, the Muslim people were having the lot of choice during the decolonization time, especially the, in the Middle East or in the South Eastern countries like Malaysia or Indonesia. So they were given the, I mean, the, their option was establishing nation state. So after that, also it is seen that nationalism is a turning point which separates modern times from the Middle Ages. So this is the, some kind of interiorization we are seeing in historical periodization when the modern times starting, when nationalism emerges. And also another very important point is here, it is seen as inevitable stage in the universal ideological development. So we cannot skip from it. All of the societies in the world supposed to go through it. So uh, Benedict Anderson in Imagine communities are talking about it in, in a very nice way by criticizing it. So there are a lot of critics and today the many things are happening. I mean, they're criticizing such kind of understanding that the all nations supposed to go through the stage of having nationalism as their ideology. But still the common, I mean, the common understanding and the contemporary interpretation of nationalism is still almost the same. So this is the summary, what we are seeing. So it is the modern ideology, inevitable stage in ideological development. And also this is a very important point for us to keep in mind this, sorry, in the Western understanding in the Western understanding, nationalism is explained within a social change. When they are uh, analyzing nationalism or the level of nationalism or the groups of nationalism types, always it's seen, it is seen within a social change, how the society is changing, how the people are changing. So it is a, some kind of the stage in social change. So unfortunately, such kind of understanding what I am seeing, it the two over understand nationalism into Eurocentric attitude. Because the since nationalism born in Europe, and the, the in Europe, Europe was the colonial, the main colonial powers were in Europe during that time. So Western culture and the 
was seen as a pinnacle of social progress. So this was the highest level of the social progress. As a result, even in the understanding of nationalism, two different morally, the distinction happened. It was divided into two and liberal civic Western nationalism, civic Western nationalism, which is the happening in European countries and later in USA, which is positive, which is the liberal, which is democratic, which is good nationalism. Then another type of nationalism, illiberal, based on ethnicity. So these are the how, uh, it, the, the reason for the wars which are happening in the non-European countries were explained in a such way. So it is illiberal, their nationalism, ethnic, Eastern, bad nationalism, or negative type of nationalism, which was called, I mean, the, taken in a very negative way. So nationalism was divided into two. So a good one is in Europe, it is a civic, but uh, unfortunately in other parts of the world, ethnic nationalism was happening. And this ethnic nationalism is the reason for many happenings in the world. So this is the very strong and very clear cut. But again, this division was also the criticized. And as you, as we can see, it is the baseless and even the everyone, even the high school students, uh, high school students can uh, criticize this one because it's artificial. Not only in other parts and the Europe was having also a lot of the ethnic, the, the ethnic problems and also the, it cannot be always the civic and also the, uh, it can be the indifferent parts. It's why Eli Kaduri was saying that the nationalism was simply an unfortunate historical accident dating from the early 19th century and giving rise to imperialism, war, and ultimately fascism. So this is the what the Eli Kaduri is saying is very close what I found to the or understanding of nationalism. So if according to Eli Kaduri, this is the nationalism was giving the, it is the one of the reasons for imperialism, war and the fascism. So then now this is the, how is the nationalism is seen in contemporary scholarship. Now I am moving to the Vadiu Zaman Said Nursi's understanding and perception of nationalism. So these are the, I think all of you, you know about all these, the, the ideas topics. I will just uh, summarize it. I will give the some, I will show some differences in order to prepare some kind of the background for discussion only. So when we are talking uh, the topic of nationalism in the writings in Risa always the first thing what comes to our mind is that nationalism is two. I mean, the uh, two layers or the two levels of nationalism, according to Badizam and Saiters. One is positive, another one is negative. So uh, he says that the awakening of nationalism is either positive, in which case it is aroused through compassion for one's fellow man and is the cause for mutual recognition and assistance, or it is negative, in which case being aroused by racialist ambitions it is the cause of antipathy and mutual hostility, and this Islam rejects. So the first one, later I will again, in the next slide, I will again give the summary of these two types. So number one is a fitra or natural, but number two is artificial, and it really is the, it is against or Islamic understanding, or again, Islam is rejecting it. But what Badiou Zaman Said Nursi, what type of the nationalism but you, Zaman Said Nursi, is talking here. And what is what does Nursi mean by term nationalism? When we are, I mean, this is a very important point, you know, sometimes even we are having a lot of the discussions. I am talking about nationalism. The man or the woman next sitting to me is talking about nationalism. We are we may argue for one hour. After this argumentation, we realize that. What I understand by nationalism is totally different from the understanding of nationalism by that person. So it means the definition is very important for every term because the 
is even this is nationalism for Western scholarship, what the Western scholars understand by nationalism is totally different to how we are seeing nationalism in Muslim scholarship or by Muslims. So uh, what I experienced at the term millet and milliet, it's always three terms were used in order to discuss about the nationhood, nationality, nationalism, not only in the writings of Badiouzam and Sayyid Nursi, but the other Muslim scholars also, even among the Russian Muslims in the uh, early 20th century, it is a millet, milliet. But you know what I found that the, these terms millet and milliet are uh, always used not to the, express the meaning of nation, ethnic nation, but always were used to denote a religion and the membership of as a synonym of the word ummah, like in the Quran. In the Quran is also mentioned is a religious community, right? The millet, millatul Ibrahim, millatul uh, no. So this is the religious community of the, all the prophets. And also Usmanla was also having the millet system. So almost the same, it was on the basis of the religious community. But I found that the Badiou Zaman Sayyid Nursi, when he was talking about mentioning the millet, most of the cases, most of the cases, he was also talking about this religious community, not specifically about Turks or about the Kurds. But for nationalism, he used the word millet chilek. So, and this is two. And number three is also very important. Uh, I think I took this idea from the writings of Ahmad Davutola or another person. I don't remember now. So he, Badiou Zaman Said Nursi, expounded the ideology of nationalism through its relationship with the universal values of rights, human rights, justice, equality, and mutual assistance principles which are essential for maintaining peace, social stability, and human security. So if you remember, I told to you that the, in the modern scholarship, we are seeing nationalism as a, uh, from the framework of social change. We are seeing it as a force in social change. But for Badiou Zaman Sayyid Nursi, he was understanding and he was studying and he was analyzing it through its relationship, the relationship of nationalism with universal values. So for him, moral and social aspects are more important than what type of the, what type of the differences the nationalism was bringing to the world. So, so this is the, I try to, I mean, the, in order to remember for all of us the, about this is the, uh, positive and negative nationalism. I summarize everything here. So positive is the inner Selenor. So these are the words he mentioned, but you say it, he mentioned it is a fitra, human nature. It is a natural phenomenon. So it means the all the, we are all born into the ethnicities different, or the, we are speaking in different languages or the rest, these are all natural phenomenon and it is a fitra. I mean, the natural phenomenon that this is our, we are born into it and it's natural and being born into the some specific ethnicity does not bring any, some kind of the value to us until except or iman, according to the Quranic understanding also. And also fitra, what is the fitra? In the positive type of nationalism, when we are born into the different uh, ethnicities or different the uh, Kabila, for example, or we are speaking in different language. So this is all in order to help us to know each other and also to assist each other because it is the cause of social assistance and solidarity. So we are a different or differences are bringing unity to us because this is the some kind of the value it's adding some kind of the positive value and also solidarity to us because we are not focusing on this unity and we are focusing on our similarities and these are differences are seeing some kind of value only for us and also positive nationalism is an inner need of the social life and strengthening islamic brotherhood 
But when we are talking on the when we are looking on the negative type of the nationalism, we are seeing that it is there is it is non natural phenomenon because here that is the man said Nursi is talking about the nationalism and especially racism what was happening during his time. And it is a non natural phenomenon because it was brought by education by also the by the newspapers during that time and also by the pushing some governments especially during the decolonization time and the putting nationalism or the bringing nationalism as a main base of the nation states and in negative nationalism also he is talking about that there is happening superiority of one nation over other nations and it leads to the racism this racism is the cause of enmity and destroys social cohesion. It's why it is the source of inequality and injustice in our the societies. So if the positive nationalism is the cause or the reason for the social stability, negative is going to be cause of social instability. Then I am just asking here this question, we will discuss it there later. Then can we suggest that the modern ideology of nationalism is responsible for current problems, what I was mentioning in the beginning uh, it, or not? Because the, I was also mentioning to you that the, it was understood by uh, main, uh, mainstream scholarship that the nationalism was bringing some kind of the balance and the harmony because it was the, some kind of the stage inevitable stage in ideological development, right? But here I am bringing ideas of Buddhism and Satanism and I think, uh, not only I think, I am sure this is our idea too, that these are the, what we are seeing are the happening because of nationalism, but it is nationalism is responsible, is the only responsible force for the current realities, current problems or not. So, Okay, the, here again, I'm adding some information. So, Badiou Zaman Said Nursi said that the negative nationalism is artificial force that destroys true human civilization. Nationalism, explain nationalism within the framework of universal values, which is linked to the human civilization. So, he is the saying that the artificial, this artificial force is destroying true human civilization because it ruins the aspiration of people for social progress. This is very interesting, you know, but Yuzaman Said Nursi is saying nationalism ruins the aspiration of people for social progress. But the mainstream scholarship is saying nationalism is inevitable stage in social progress. So this is a very big difference what we are seeing in a theoretical part at the moment now. And also I'm moving to the second point. He is mentioning also principles of racism and nationalism do not follow justice and right. They impose tyranny towards other races, especially towards the races of the minority groups. And uh, this is happening today. We are uh, not only happening today, and it was it was happening in the 20th century, 19th century. Again, you know, here what comes to me, my mind, such kind of the happenings were uh, or the tyranny towards other races were happening, always in history, right? Where nationalism was uh, the nationalism was not the case at all. So it means the our human, uh, the eager, or not the eager, the human, some kind of the nefs is always tries to push some kind of tyranny towards other races who are not like us. So this is not the something, the modern, what I'm trying to say here, this feeling is not something modern, it is not the contemporary problem only, because always such kind of things were happening. Why happening? Later we will discuss. And the number three, ruler of race, racist leanings prefer those of the same race and cannot act justly. Especially here is the, he was talking also about the Umayyads also and the, what was in, happening in history and today also the, uh, what is happening. For example, if the ruler is from the one specific ethnic race or the ethnicity, 
other ethnicities who are minorities are uh, going to be not preferred by the ruler. He will prefer his own the nation than the other minority nations in one state, in the even the nation states. And we are seeing it in many countries, especially even the, in Malaysia, for example, I am bringing Malaysia because I know the Malaysia the most, and I, so I know the Russia. In Malaysia, the Malays are the Bumiputra. Bumiputra, it means they are the preferred nation, they are the highest level. Then the Chinese and Indians are, although they were born in this country, yes, they are non Muslims, but among them, there are Muslims too. They are considered the second the level of the society. But such kind of problems were happening also in history. Not only, this is not something new in our society. It was happening even before emergence of nationalism, right? And also say, but you Zaman Said Mercy is talking that the, therefore the bonds of nationalism may not be set up in place of the bonds of religion. If they are, there will be no justice, right will disappear. This is really the thing what we are experiencing today because of the nationalism took the place of religion today. As a result, there is no equality, no justice, no right everything disappeared today in many in our societies. And here I wanted to mention in this side, I'm mentioning how we are understanding these things. Uh, the, when the Vedio Zaman Said nurses understand nationalism. So as I was mentioning, when I was talking about the second point, I said in the third point also, I said it was happening also before, right? Because but Yuzama Said Nursi also says that such kind of things were happening even before. It's why, why for Bad Yuzaman Said Nursi, nationalism is not something new, although the term is new, and also not only term, this specific ideology is new and is very strong during our times, but such kind of the sentiments, such kind of the uh, differentiating people according to their race or according to their the differences was happening always in history. Even during the Islamic history, in Islamic history, he said, and he was bringing the uh, example of the Umayyads because they were preferring the division of their community based on tribalism. So for Badu Zaman Said Nursi, he was showing tribalism also as a part or as a one type of negative nationalism. Now I am moving to this the point. And also, Badu Zaman Said Nursi did not divide nationalism into civic, European, and ethnic, non-European nationalism, nationalisms. All were the cause of enmity that destroys social cohesion, security, and harmony because Europe was seeing World War First, World War II, Second, the Second World War, civil wars. I mean, the, the most difficult wars were happening in Europe and most were happening, yes, happening because of the imperialism, because of the colonial reasons. But, you know, it was the, but the Second World War was really is the best on the fascism. And we cannot just tell that the entire Europe is having civic Nationalism only. So according to Badiou Zaman Said Nursi, nationalism is negative. Negative if it takes the place of religion. And because the reasons I will explain later, it is because of the universal values I will explain later. So Badiou Zaman Said Nursi envisage the entire world as a part of modern civilization. So this is also very uh, the, interesting. For him, it doesn't matter. Nationalism is the emerging in the Europe or in East or in other parts in the Latin America, for example, it is not because of the specific the human community or specific civilization, because for Badiou Zaman Said Nursi, we all are belonging to modern civilization. Modern civilization with its specific foundations, later we will uh, discuss about it, but everywhere where uh, the nationalism is emerging, it destroys civilizational order. And also he analyzed 
everything within the main foundations and values of modern civilization and universal values. So these are the, in order to remember only, Badiuzum and Sayyid Nursi was the, the, talking about modern civilization, what we are experiencing today, Muslim world, the European world, we are the, I think all of us, we are a part here. We are talking about Quranic civilization. This is the, what we are seeing today is in theory only. Unfortunately, we are not experiencing this Quranic civilization, but our governments or the countries or the hearts, unfortunately belong to this modern civilization today. So we are talking about the Anania, self-benefit, and we were always, I think we were having these sicknesses long before, even before colonialism. And or the foundation is also racism and conflict, lost desire, enmity conflict, and forced aggression. So these are the foundations of modern civilization. And uh, this is the reason for the hundred sorts of diseases. But the Quranic civilization, which is the well of happens, what the Badu Zaman Sayyid Nursi was the explaining as a well of happens, supposed to be based on support among its members, justice, human security, virtue, and love. Unfortunately, these foundations are missing in our societies today. So here, if you see here, we have to have love, Unfortunately, or the foundation for human, the relationship today is based on enmity, focusing on difference, conflict, and racism in the Muslim world everywhere. It's why we are divided. I mean, we are always focusing on the differences before focusing on unity. So this is the. It's why I was mentioning to you, our hearts also is the affected by these foundations. We are, uh, unfortunately, we are a part of such kind of the world view today. So that, okay, only two slides, okay. Norsi came to the conclusion that the modern civilizations, a guiding principle for relations between people and communities was nationalism and racism, effectively considering a particular race to be superior and prioritizing race over religion. And in the 25th world, he also said that the, by reason of its philosophy, present day civilization accepts force as the point of support in the life of society. It takes us its aim benefits and considers the principle of its life to be conflict. It considers the bond between communities to be racism and negative nationalism. While its aim is to provide a Muslims for gratifying the appetites of the soul and increasing man's needs. However, the mark of force is aggression. And the, this is how aggression is widespread today. And also in the words he continues. And since the benefits are insufficient to meet all needs, because everyone wants to satisfy their needs, their mark is that everyone tussles and jostles over them. The mark of conflict is contention and the mark of racism aggression since it thrives on devouring others. Thus, it is because of these principles of civilization that despite all its virtues, it has provided a sort of superficial happens for only 20% of mankind and cause 80% into distress and poverty. I think this is the always, I feel that this, the quotation from the words is the exactly the perfect explanation of the world in which we are living today, unfortunately. Uh, the, thus, I'm moving this side, system in which the bond between people are based on negative nationalism and racism could not establish equality and justice within society. So it seems that the for Norsi, for Norsi, the ideas of nationalism and racism are uh, among the main reasons behind the social, political, and economic injustice prevailing in the modern world. So according to my understanding of Risalea Nor, what we are experiencing these problems are uh, really related to 
the, this, what we are experiencing today, the foundations, what we are feeling, that is the negative nationalism. This is, we are very much affected with such kind of the worldview today or the opinion view today. And our mind is working on, the, on that side, unfortunately. And this is the main reason for social, political, and economic also injustice because I was explaining in just the quotation that it is the, we became the selfish and everyone wants to benefit from that. So injustice and equality inevitably led to disunity, enmity and antagonism among different groups of societies. As a result, this leads to weakness and collapse of civilizations. It's why Badiou Zaman Said Nursi was calling nationalism as a fatal poison and European disease. So this is the, my understanding and my uh, summary of the what I understand from Irsalianor on nationalism. But there are many questions in my mind, you know. Here are, we are having very, uh, the, I mean, the renowned professors who knew Irsalianor much better than me and who have the, also the life experience much wider than me, it's why there are many questions. I just want to discuss these things in order to clarify the things in my mind also. So I am reading the questions and then we can discuss inshallah. The always it what comes to my mind and my students were asking also when I was in Malaysia. Nationalism alone for all calamities happening in modern times is the only nationalism is responsible or something else. And also the number two it's I try to explain in a very wide way. Nationalism is a reality today. So we are living in nation states. There is, I mean, the, this is reality, right? This is the fact. It is firmly established in every society, not only as a political order, but also as a worldview, value system, and principle for social order and relations today, unfortunately. And, or fortunately, up to some extent, it brought stability and order at political level. If there was no nationalism for establishing political order, then what could happen? This is also the, I mean, the other side of the, just for thinking this one. Again, is nationalism a solution or curse for contemporary societies? What is an alternative for nationalism, for Muslims, for non-Muslims? Because the, yes, we understand nationalism is the bringing difficulties for us, but what is the solution? What is the alternative? Also is the, and also can we, I mean, the, yes, we can find the alternative, but the, can we find a practical solution to the and practice it by ignoring realities of geopolitics, what is happening in the world today? So it's why this are the, when I was preparing these slides, these all questions come to my mind and it's very difficult for me to answer these questions. And I think this is all from me and let us the, open the, discussion and um, thank you very much for listening and uh, who joined later i welcome you all and thank you very much also for giving this opportunity thank you very much thank you dr almira it's very it just finished on the time and you uh, uh, so we have uh, enough time to discuss and ask questions and make comments i really appreciate your presentation and it is very timely and I just, uh, as a moderator, I want to use my uh, my right to, to ask first question. You know, uh, in America, we have a different kind of nationalism or racism, which uh, which this is this is not based on uh, any race. It is all Europeans, exactly. and it is called uh, white supremacy. And then, mm -hmm. in the opposite, it created black uh, Black Lives Matters uh, movement. What would you like to, to, to comment on that? Okay, the, not only there, I think is that not only in America, also in other places also, we have the different types of the nationalism. So if we are talking it up from the viewpoint of the Badiou Zaman Said Nursi, yeah. he was the talking about tribalism also, not only about ethnicity, right? So it is about the difference. It's about difference based on the, for him is negative nationalism is the focusing on difference and also not only focusing, 
a believing of the superiority of specific social group, specific social group, but among his time, it was ethnicity, especially we have to understand also the social context here. He was living during the time uh, in Turkey, during that time, World War I was happening. After that, the, but after the Second World War, he was not mentioning about it more, but we can see what he was talking about. It was happening in the Second World War time also. So these are all what we, I mean, the name is not nationalism today in USA, but still it is nationalism, but not ethnicity, not based on ethnicity for me, but it is based on skin color or racism. Uh, if you pay attention, the, uh, Shukran Wahida was also the, when he was translating the term negative nationalism, he was the, the suggesting and using the term of racism or racialism, right? Based on the race. So this means when we are talking about nationalism today, especially, uh, within the framework, we have to understand that the term negative nationalism is not only about ethnicity, it's about also race. And also I was mentioning the tribalism also included there because by the Zaman Sayyidners, they really believe that such kind of the disunity, not only disunity, superiority of one, the group of people based on, it can be the language, it can be the race, it can be also the, like the, what is the caste system, for example, based on the caste system, all are included in my understanding within this the term of negative nationalism. This okay. is how I understand. Please the, correct me if I am wrong. This is okay. according to my understanding yes. only. Yeah, we will talk about that. It is very interesting. You have your ideas. Yes, okay. Now, uh, Colin also joined us and some other uh, uh, colleagues. You are all welcome to, to, to this. Uh, uh, or uh, uh, presentation today, and Almira made a very good presentation. Any questions and comments, please go ahead or raise your hand, or you can write in in in the yes. chat box. I also, I am also expecting answer to my questions. Also, I spent with the, I mean, the, I finished by asking five questions. Right? Okay. This is, you know, I really need this uh, answer. I really need to listen from you because. I was thinking about nationalism for a long time. It really is the some kind of the puzzle for me. I mean, the you know, is the yes, if there is no nationalism, what else can bring social stability today? Yeah. I mean, it's really I want to hear also from you your opinion on the question what I was throwing at the end of my talk. Thank you very much. I think Ahmed Ahmed Yildiz and also uh, he uh, he has intensive studies on the subject and he's an expert on the issue i i, I hope he, she will also make yes yeah, yeah. he already raised his hand ahmed yes, please yes, go ahead yes, yes. ahmed go ahead yeah okay uh okay salam alaikum uh thank you for your very good presentation uh, Elmira. uh i think this uh, question of nature is, is a puzzle for muslims and for all humanity too it's not an easy uh, thing to answer your questions for the, uh, in the first place. Uh, you know, uh, there is uh, first, uh, let's uh, accept this, uh, this uh, proposition. There is an ideal and there is the, an actual state. For instance, uh, the experts of American politics uh, define American politics as the tension between the American ideal and the American uh, actual uh, state of art. So uh, the, uh, principles of exclusion and inclusion may change on time and from society to society, but uh, we, we need to take, we, we have to take a you know, nation states as a given. Uh, this is not a matter of unfortunate choice, but we need to have a moral objection. Moral objection is the uh, starting, for, uh, starting point for uh, idealism. Uh, I will give you just two examples uh, from two movies in our uh, uh, modern conception, uh, in the modern Muslim conception, the place of uh, nationalism in, ter in terms of defining the exclusionary principle. Uh, two films, one uh, is uh, from the film movie Baran, and the other one is again from the movie uh, Rona, the mother of Azim. These are two 
movies from the Iranian uh, cinemas. Uh, in the first one, uh, Hazar, uh, Hazaras took mango to Turkmen group from Afghanistan, but she, uh, because they are Turkmen, they do not have the right to work uh, in Iran uh, in legal terms, although they are she, uh, and the state and the nationality uh, of being Pars or Fars is defined first and foremost by being she. Uh, she. And uh, the second film, in the second film, again, uh, uh, uh, mm -hmm. an Afghan uh, worker yeah. living in Ta Tehran uh, tries to find uh, an organ trans uh, transplantation for his mother, Rona, uh, for kidney transport uh, transplantation. And he finds at the end by uh, purchasing a, a kidney from an, a, a native Iranian. But he learns in the hospital that uh, a foreigner, whoever uh, he is or she is, cannot uh, take a kidney from an Ira uh, Iranian uh, citizen. So they are considered as alien. So even a kidney cannot be transplanted uh, to a foreigner, even if it is a Muslim. Yes, Baran and uh, uh, Rona, the mother of Azim. Uh, this, uh, what this, uh, this tells us, Yes, nation, nation is not a curse, but in a sense, it is a curse because it, is the, it defines both a principle of inclusion and a principle of exclusion. It may change, you know, uh, you may yes. find it, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's the, this principle in history from different axes. Ex, uh, Asabiya is an important, you know, source of power for all politics. And if you define this Asabiya in spiritual uh, Manevi terms, then that's good. This is this is Islam. So Islam brings us a morality that uh, that leads us to question the principles of nation nationalism, uh, uh, the mainstays of the mainstays of nations. And this, uh, I think, in uh, Gamma's world can be defined in two axes: uh, nationalism uh, or the principle of nationalism, modern nationalism, tell us that the political borders, frontiers should correspond to ethnic uh, frontiers. So ethnic front, the correspondence be one-to-one correspondence, even uh, if you access this, uh, this division between good and bad nationalism and ethnic and civic nationalism, it doesn't make any sense in the final uh, analysis, I think. Uh, uh, anyway, if you accept even this division, uh, so uh, unit uh, nations and tell us that uh, ethnic boundaries should correspond to political boundaries. Sure. So if a place is a, a, a nation, a nationalized, let's say, place uh, is inhabited by a certain uh, national groups, we assume, uh, we assume, let's assume so, then the political boundaries is, must be defined by, the, by that ethnicity. Uh, so this is the principle of legitimacy. The other, uh, the second uh, principle of legitimacy, those who rule us should belong to us. Uh, so this is a kind of uh, seems to be a democratic nationalism, uh, but in fact, it, it also has an exclu exclusionary aspect to it. Uh, this is intrinsic. Exclusionism is intrinsic to nationalism. So uh, when we look at it from this moral perspective, I don't think that, I think nationalism uh, uh, brought two world wars and it is the source of, uh, you know, new <laughs> imperialism, uh, and uh, all sorts of, you know, proxy wars going on in this world. If you say American nationalism, white supremacism, Hindu supremacism, Jewish supremacism, whatever it is, religious, ethnic, racial, or class-based even, uh, these are all, you know, axes that nationalism may, uh, stay, uh, may stay upon. This, has, this may change, even it may be religious, you know, uh, in the case of, you know, Israelites, uh, Jew, Jewishness being Jewishness uh, is the, uh, all Jewish in the world can, uh, you know, uh, immigrate to uh, Israel today and become a citizen of Israel and uh, be a member of Israeli society wherever uh, he wishes, you know. This was the same uh, in the past, in, in the, Darl Islam uh, uh, in fact, uh, Moroccan philosopher uh, Mohammed Abi Jabiri 
uh, describes this as uh, someone like uh, Ibn Arabi uh, uh, starts from and Andalusia, comes to Anatolia in Konya, uh, works there, marries there, and then um, uh, goes to Sham, Damascus, live there, become an affiliate of the palace. Uh, he, he works there as a Qadi or an important, you know, member of ulema. So no problem. It, he, he becomes the member of society. Uh, he lives in, uh, provided that that society is considered to be Muslim. Uh, but today you cannot inher inher inherit this notion of Muslimness as a, in the form of, you know, dominant nation and the dominated nation, uh, as you refer to in the millet system. This is just uh, the, I think, uh, the something of the uh, past. Yeah, history. Uh, yeah, you have something to say? Yeah, history. Yeah. It's why I was mentioning it's uh, really so, history. Hey, Ahmed, Sorry? you have that? Have you done? Ahmed, is, are, is okay, you did you finish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. No, uh, okay. If, if you have time, I will add some. Uh, I read some, uh, you know, one or two things. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, in terms of uh, Bediouzaman understanding of nationalism, I think, do you hear me? Yes. yes. Go ahead. You hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. In terms of understanding of uh, Bediouzaman understanding of nationalism, I think uh, he's well aware of uh, nationalism, uh, the, you know, uh, both, uh, uh, you know, opportunities and the, uh, uh, you know, uh, risks or, uh, you know, uh, stakes uh, it brought with it uh, for Muslim societies. Uh, he first, you know, warned Kurds uh, and tried to uh, give them uh, a perspective that transcends tribalism in order to, uh, for them to feel as part of a larger society considered to be as Kurd. And he didn't stay there and he, he pointed to the fact that you are part of a larger society that is called Ottoman and Ottomans too is part of a larger society or polity that is called uh, Muslim or Islam. And Islam is also part of a larger society that is called Grand Humanity, Büyük İnsanlık, İnsaniyet Kebir, Kübra. So I think Bediüzzaman's understanding uh, uh, uh, the core to the understanding of Bediüzzaman is this principle of inclusion and exclusion. I think uh, Bediüzzaman qualifies uh, the notion of, you know, uh, Islamic belonging with the notion of uh, universal civil human civilization. So we need to bre breach these two notions uh, as a source of legitimacy that, is, that goes beyond uh, the nationalism or nationalist ties. Uh, nationalism, uh, unfortunately, uh, le uh, uh, leads Muslims, you know, to see uh, the, to see uh, them as, uh, you know, their uh, aliens. So they exclude uh, Muslims, uh, whether uh, it, uh, in all effect, uh, Muslim societies that are nationalized, nationalism beca becomes the, you know, uh, the, the main uh, center of, you know, the main logic of uh, uh, defining uh, one's self, both uh, at personal and collective level. So if you are not an Iranian, uh, you cannot be a member of uh, Iranian society. If you, whatever you are, if you are a Muslim or not, if you are a Shi or not, this is the case in all Muslim societies. And there are much more, many more qualifications, you know, other than uh, Islam. So Islam is not at, at the official level, at the governmental or uh, uh, state level is not the main bond of, you know, uh, uh, the main bond that binds Muslims. But uh, at so societal level, we need to establish such a, you know, uh, wide, uh, I think, uh, uh, such a widening horizon uh, to consider uh, a, a, another uh, Muslim, be with, uh, with, uh, with uh, whatever uh, he is or she is part of a national society, it is not important. 
he or she must be considered as a, a brother or sister. Uh, this is you know crucial for us, but in terms of nationalistic imagination, this is not unfortunately possible. And we consider uh, even them uh, as alien. So I maybe you may distinguish between society level and state level. And at state level, unfortunately, it is not possible, uh, you know, uh, to just disregard uh, the impact of nationalism. We need to take it as given, but we need to question it, uh, and we need uh, to devise a moral, uh, you know, benchmark uh, for upholding. Uh, uh, and or rejecting nationalism, but at society level, uh, we need uh, to distinguish between all these uh, types of uh, bonds that may unite us. And this is not only you know local, not only regional, not only national, or not only uh, civilizational in terms of uh, casting uh, in Islamic terms. It is, uh, I think, at the level of all humanity. Uh, this is a, a horizon that uh, we need uh, to have, I think, with the Zaman uh, opens up uh, the windows of uh, that horizon. Yeah, for the time being, I thank, will thank stop you, Thank you, thank Ahmed. You. If you have time, I will give you again, you have to, you will have opportunity to, to, to talk. I have a question for you, maybe. But uh, uh, Almira, there are some colleagues, they just uh, joined us because they are coming from another meeting. Mm -hmm. Ask me if you can just... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, ask your four, five questions, or, or you can, uh, uh, uh, you know, uh, reflect this on on this. Uh, uh, with okay. Share screen, make a share screen. The last slide. Okay. I mean, it was. Questions on your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. I understand. It was very. Uh, the questions were a very from the skeptical ones. Can you see it? Yes, yes, okay. Okay. So yes. this after the talk I was mentioning, these are not the real questions. These are only the, to push us to think about the, uh, about the, what we are seeing today. Mm -hmm. So I was asking, mm -hmm. can we blame nationalism alone for all calamities happening in modern times? Mm -hmm. Nationalism is a reality today, so we cannot run away from it. It is a firmly established in every society, not only as a political order, but as a worldview, value system, and principle for social order and relations. Up to some extent, it brought stability and order at political level. If there was no nationalism for establishing political order, then what could happen? Is nationalism a solution or curse for contemporary societies? What is an alternative for nationalism for Muslims, non-Muslims? Can we find a practical solution by ignoring realities of geopolitics. So this is what was, I was uh, mentioning. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Now uh, you have uh, questions and uh, for reflection, for comments. Anybody else who wants Can to make- Can I stop sharing? Can I stop sharing to see the- Who, I couldn't see you. Yeah, yeah. I stopped sharing. Yeah. Okay. The... So I am going to the chat in order to read, right? Or? Yeah, yeah, no, there was, I couldn't see any questions there right now, but if there is anybody who can ask his questions. It is, uh, I am seeing about positive nationalism that he did and the uh, professor Faris Kaya was mentioning. Yeah. He does not mention anywhere in his writings as positive nationalism. He sees positive nationhood. So there is a discussion is going about the nationhood here. So the he was talking about two layers of the sentiments of the belonging of the, it is not only nationhood, you know, it's about the sentiments. First layer, he is talking, he is mentioning that it is a natural one because this is already born in us. We know we belong to the some different nation and we are willing to help each other. But the second layer, what he is mentioning nationalism to the modern nationalism is the, uh, what we are seeing as a ideology of nationalism today. So it, 
I was using the in English uh, translation of Shukran Wahi. Actually, I don't use any book. I don't have even one book at home. All of my books are 22 boxes are coming from Malaysia on the way. So I am using what in my computer I have an online thing. So I use in English. So I, I will check it. I will check this. The, can we call it the nationalism positive or the nationhood only? Profaris. Uh, yeah, Profaris Kaya. I will, I will check it. Uh, Almira, you said, you know, for Nursi, uh, nationalism is a non-natural phenomenon. It is constructed. It is an ideology. Artificial. And it reminded me what uh, uh, Anderson Benedict says in Imagined yeah, Community. Yeah, true. Yeah. True, true. Yeah. Uh, you know, the when I was doing my master's degree, I studied the old Risale Nur. I tried to understand it within the uh, framework of the worldview of Islamic worldview at that time. I was also studying the Benedict Anderson. I read the, his book. I, yeah, it is true that the, according to Betty Zaman Saitersi, he says forcefully, it is the enforce on other people, uh, on Muslims also, he is the saying the same. It's like Benedict Anderson is mentioning. Not only him, the many Muslim scholars were mentioning the same, writing about it. I mean, it was brought by, education. If what uh, we believe to the in the mainstream scholarship, they are saying is inevitable social stage, right? It means it's supposed to emerge by its own. So it means we are uh, reaching some kind of the level in our social development and nationalism supposed to emerge by its own. So this is the call, what the in our schools, we are studying about nationalism, but, but for Bediouzam and Said Nursim, it was brown. It was the artificial, it means it was born, or even the terminology was brought in Europe in order after the French Revolution. There was a need after the French Revolution in France because this unity was happening everywhere. There was a, some kind of need for some kind of ideology in order to bring all of them together because before their loyalty was belonging to the kingship, they were having a king. But after revolution, no more a king, they needed some, something in order to bring stability and also loyalty. So nationalism was the, was the I mean, these ideas were uh, useful for after the French revolution in France, later it was spreading to the Europe, unfortunately, the main thing is not that nationalism was artificial. For me, is the main difficulty, and Benedict Anderson is also talking about it. So mainly, the this the European scholarship wanted to see what was happening in Europe, also happening in other parts of the world. So they tried to modeling all of the happenings in Europe, and they really wanted to see exactly the same happenings, but it did not happen in the case of nationalism because the nationalism brought the difficulties to the Muslim world, many problems. It's why they tried to show, oh, we are Europeans, we are a higher level, we are having the civic nationalism, but in Asia, they are having ethnic nationalism because it was no solution for the Muslim world. Okay, thank you. Dr. Abdul Majid Khan, please go ahead. You raised your hand as Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Please go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, I joined very, very late, but the, uh, because of certain problems over here, I'm speaking from Aligarh Muslim University, India. My uh, humble uh, some submissions about the type topic because I have seen the last slide, it was raising certain questions that uh, one of the points was nationalism is a reality, it is geopolitical reality of our times. Sister was giving us a background that it emerged in Europe and uh, later Muslims, uh, for Muslims, this was a foreign concept and they had to digest it and they had to evolve and people just say that they're at certain stage of development and it was quite natural that they should have developed into nation states. You well used a uh, appropriate term that imagine it. This is an, it does not have any uh, real basis. You know, the philosophical and historical development of Europe 
it was an extension of their problems, their problems with the church, their problems with the universal concepts. And so whatever was their need, we have Gellner and like uh, him, many people who talk about it, but about the Muslim world, that's very important. I am not uh, right now talking of uh, Sayyid Nursi's reaction to it or response to it. I will give only two responses. And I see that there is no way for the humanity to really uh, uh, go ahead, but to transcend the nation state structure, which is quite uh, uh, foreign, foreign in, not in the sense of that it has come from a foreign land, but it is not in conformity with the universal principles. Uh, ra rational ethnic distinctions apart, we have some universal values and those universal values which are reflective of universality and Tawhidic paradigm of establishing truth, of establishing justice uh, in a universal manner, nationalism and uh, standing for truth for its own sake, for God's sake, it does not fit in the scheme. And we had some intellectuals in 20th century who have uh, spoken about him. One of them was uh, Dr. Muhammad Iqbal. In one of his books, Speeches of Iqbal, Muhammad Iqbal, the point of uh, uh, Indo-Pakistan subcontinent, where he said that while he was a student in Europe, he could understand that the same nationalism, which has been now there in Europe for consolidation of different uh, groups in Europe, this will be used as a disintegrating factor by the same people while they will operate it in the Muslim lands. And that is what happened, uh, which was used for the dismember of the Ottoman Caliphate, Arab, uh, Arab revolt, and it continues to be a disintegrating factor in the Muslim polity. This is number one. Number two, in the early 70s, uh, there was a group uh, I have been associated, fortunately I know of it is development, the Muslim Institute for Research and Planning London. It was led by Dr. Kaleem Siddiqui. And it is to his credit that he just uh, got certain conferences on it. There is a book by uh, Dr. Kaleem Siddiqui and other, uh, it is on nationalism. There were Arab nationalism, Kashmiri nationalism, other nationalisms, how it has been uh, used, not only it is scriptural position, it is Islam, what is, it is akin to tribalism. It has no legacy, it has no legitimacy in the Islamic scheme of things, what nation states speak of, what nation states stand for. So there is no future. No, from the scriptural point of view, it is almost, it is apostrophe. And from the political world, what people have achieved out of it? There is a big question. What is the role of it? What is this future? There is no, no way out for all the Muslims of the world to transcend the nation state mindset, nation st structures. They can retain their autonomy within the global higher values and where the, their collective, uh, collective power, collective uh, virtu uh, virtuosity is to be used for furthering the good globally. This is my submission on the subject. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abdul Majid. Uh, uh, Almira, would you like to say something about this, or it was a comment? I think it was a comment. It was a comment. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, others? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Dr. Faris Kaya. I saw you. You raised your hand. You are. If you still want to ask a question, please go ahead. Dr. Faris. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, of course. Okay, thank you very much for your excellent presentation, thank you. Dr. Elmira. Uh, please give us your address before you go to Germany. I, we have to send you a collection in, in English. <laughs> your address. It's coming from Malaysia, it's coming. <laughs> I mean, do you want, to, you want to send it to Germany? I don't think it. Yeah, if it is in Germany, give us your address. Inshallah, you will receive that when when you are in Germany? Uh, I still have the collection prof you gave to me 17 years ago, or it's coming from Malaysia. I, I see, okay. Secondly, uh, I have uh, it. Yeah, secondly, about this, your this, uh, presentation, I would like to make it short so that it will be long. Nursi never uses positive nationalism in his writings. As you mentioned, he says milliet. Mm -hmm. Muspet Milliet. 
-hmm. which is based on love. No enmity in Rusi's understanding of nationhood or nationalism. If there is any clue of negativeness, then it becomes negative nationalism, which is rejected by Nursi. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is on, based on love, it is positive, whatever name you call it. Mm -hmm. But when you say nationalism, then it is negative. It is for sure. In all his writings, everywhere in Risale, in old side period, in new side period, is, is valid that love is the basis for positive milieu, nationhood. You, you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. that. That's why I wanted to make it, you know, a bit more clear. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Others? You're uh, welcome. Any other question or comments? Okay, so we have done. I think so, yes. <laughs> yes. Great, <laughs> we finished earlier. And uh, I, I, once more, I, I'd like to thank Almira uh, Ahmetova and I wish all success uh, with her new scholarship in, in Germany, in Freiburg. It is a beautiful city. I visited several times and Indeed. you will enjoy that. And yes. I think there's no questions. I, so I will uh, announce uh, to, an announcement about our next meeting will be June 13th. Uh, it is Suhaib Malik. It is uh, Dr. Suhaib Malik uh, will give us a talk on June 13th. And then we will have our final speaker for this uh, uh, session, in, you know, uh, it is uh, Fred Reed or colleague Fred Reed from Canada. It is on June 27. Okay. See, see you then. I wish you all a good Sunday. Thank, thank, you, you, very much. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You are all welcome. Okay. Thank, thank you. you all.